Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Thursday. So I am back with some on camera videos. So I want to talk about the whole Meg the Stallion situation. It has been getting really crazy. So if you guys don't know, she's currently being sued by her former cameraman. And it's gotten so crazy that a lot of the blogs, including The Root, are comparing her to the female Diddy. Like they're literally combining her picture with Diddy and folks are dragging her. But I think there's more than meets the eye, okay? And I want to kind of wait before I just jumped on camera and talked about the situation. So what went down is that yesterday, child, I was minding my own black ass business, okay? And then I started getting messages that Meg was being sued. I'm like, well, okay, let's go ahead and sip this tea. So anyhow, she's being sued by a cameraman. He's saying that, you know, Meg forced him to watch her have sex with other women. So the whole situation was a mess. Um, it made national news yesterday. So we're going to go ahead and watch this news clip together. Tonight, bombshell allegations against one of the biggest names in rap music. Megan Thee Stallion is being sued by her former cameraman, who is accusing her of harassment and a hostile work environment. In a lawsuit filed today in L.A. County Superior Court, Emilio Garcia claims he accompanied Megan Thee Stallion on a 2022 trip to Ibiza. According to the lawsuit, Garcia says he was riding in a car with the rapper and three other women after a night of partying when Megan began having sex with one of those women right next to him. In the lawsuit, Garcia says he was embarrassed, mortified, and offended and claims the next day the music star told him, quote, don't ever discuss what you saw. In a statement, an attorney for Megan Thee Stallion tells NBC News this is an employment claim for money with no sexual harassment claim filed and with salacious accusations to attempt to embarrass her. We will deal with this in court. All right, so you guys just saw that news clip. So that is what's being alleged. So that's what's going on right now with the case. Now, there was a lot of drama yesterday on Twitter, okay? So people are finding out that this cameraman, Emilio Garcia, he's a low-key bard. And somehow he infiltrated um, Megan's camp and that he was sent there by Nicki Minaj. And so there's a lot of ties to him and Nicki. So a lot of people are saying that Nikki's behind this lawsuit, allegedly. So the whole situation is a mess. I'm just going to show you guys some of these receipts right now. I'm going to um, read them off to y'all. If you guys remember when Meg Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj were beefing and she dropped the song Bigfoot, Emilio was seen liking the post and he also went on Nicki Minaj's post because people took a screenshot of this back in January and he commented, not one lie, okay? And then here's a picture showing that she was definitely in Ibiza back in June 17th of 2022, because TMZ was following her around as well. This was These were the women that she was with. Um, one of her fan pages wrote, real hot girl shit. And all these women are gorgeous. So I'm really trying to figure out which one's box she ate. I'm just saying, okay? Uh, then... Here are pictures of him as well. So he was also there doing camera work and he was posting pictures in Spain. So you can see here where he says Ibiza is so cute. And then there's pictures, um, he's saying laugh my ass off, it's giving Ibiza attire. And then there's pictures of him and another woman. It doesn't look like Meg, but maybe one of the girls that Meg ate out, I don't know. <laughs> but um, that's him. So it does show that he was there at the same time that Meg the Stallion was there. Now, what's very interesting is that, remember when Nicki Minaj was going on her rant about Desiree Perez, um, who works over there at Rock Nation, this was one of the uh, tweets that she had posted that he liked. So I'm gonna go ahead and read that to you guys here. So here Nicki Minaj says, on the next song, I dwell into all the people Desiree allegedly fired for unknown reasons. Other things as well. So many people were blindsided and hurt by her, allegedly. She's willing to go broke to try and replace me. Fix it, Jesus. Hashtag Goodfoot. Okay? So, Emilio Garcia, a.k.a. Emilio Cucci, that's the name he goes by on Twitter, child. 
He liked that. So basically confirming that he was one of those people that was fired by Desiree Perez. So a lot of people are saying it seems that he was bitter about the firing and decided to start spilling tea to Nicki Minaj. So let me go ahead and read to you guys this blind item. Remember when Nicki told Lotto that she knows all her release dates and has people at every label that give her information and labels have whole meetings about her? Well, it's true. Cardi and Meg's management slash label have had meetings with them about Nicki, but they were told to never respond to her because she's trying to sabotage them and use them for promo. The labels are not meeting to sabotage Nicki. They are meeting to stop Nicki from sabotaging Cardi and Meg. You notice Cardi and Meg have gotten smarter about how they deal with her. Nicki has no budget. No one wants to deal with Nicki because of her attitude and being late all the time. So because she can't afford promotion, Nicki's goal is to use Meg and Cardi's rollout for promotion on all of her projects. Nicki won't announce or release anything until she knows when Cardi or Meg have something coming. Nicki tries to release whenever Meg or Cardi release. So people will talk about them all at the same time and promote her to get her fans to counter stream her music against theirs, which inflates her numbers. She found out about Cardi's label meeting and Cardi's album was supposed to drop in November. Nicki went online and announced she was dropping in November. Cardi didn't release. She dropped Listy with bongos cause she had no money for a video. Watch Cardi and Megan won't have a single moment or release without Nicki trying to shadow it with something. Meg and Cardi announced bongos. Nicki posted her album cover 10 minutes later. Every Cardi release or announcement, there will be an attempt to sabotage by Nicki. But Nicki will claim the labels are trying to stop her. Anyways, on the T, Desiree found out who was leaking information to Nicki and got them fired. As she should have. When Nicki brags on Twitter and Queen Radio about having info and controlling slash knowing everything and people's meetings and plans. So this blind item came out around the time of bongos. And they're not lying. When Cardi B and Megan, you know what I'm saying, had posted that bongos was coming out, Nicki ran to post her album cover, right? So back then they were saying that Desiree found that there was some type of snake, some type of snitch in the camp and she fired them. Now that's very ironic coming from Desiree Perez because we know she's a certified snitch. But on another note, so now folks are putting two and two together and they're feeling like Emilio Garcia was that snitch in the camp and he's upset that he was fired and that basically right now he's blacklisted in the industry and he can't get any work. So this is why he is now suing Meg Thee Stallion in Rock Nation. So it's not just about, you know, pay inequality or him not getting a check. Um, in the main part of the lawsuit, it clearly states here, second cause of action, failure to prevent and remedy harassment in violation with FEHA, Plaintiff Garcia against Rock Nation and Stallion Entertainment. Then at line 56, it goes on to say, Plaintiff was subject to harassment based on sex by defendant Meg Thee Stallion. As alleged in more detail above, such conduct is prohibited by FEHA, California Government Code. So there is definitely a sexual harassment case. This did not just come out of the blue. It's not just about the employment issue of it. Um, he speaks about it in the lawsuit. So at line 13, it says, on or around June 2022, Plaintiff was traveling on tour with Stallion in Ibiza, Spain. After a night out, Plaintiff, Stallion, and three other women were riding in an SUV together. Suddenly, Stallion and one of the other women start having sex right beside Plaintiff. Plaintiff could not get out of car as it was moving and he was in the middle of nowhere in a foreign country. Plaintiff was embarrassed, mortified, and offended throughout the ordeal. The following day, Stallion required that the plaintiff was in the that the plaintiff was in the SUV the previous night. Plaintiff confirmed he was in the SUV and subsequently Stallion instructed, "Don't ever discuss what you saw." Stallion berated and directed her fat shaming comments towards a plaintiff such as fat bitch, spit out your food and you don't need to be eating. Okay? So that's all a part of the lawsuit. Now, I think there's a lot of nuances. I think several things can be true at once, right? He could definitely be a low-key barb who's a clout chaser, you know, who was cool, you know, being in that environment until he was outed by Desiree Perez and then fired. So then he's sneaking information to Nikki. 
But even if he's sneaking information to Nikki, does that mean that Nikki's behind the lawsuit or helping him to file the lawsuit, you know, at Megan? No, it doesn't necessarily mean that as well. Now, do I believe that she had sex in front of him? Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. Nothing that these celebrities do shock me. Let's not forget, you know what I'm saying, Lizzo is being accused of the same thing, okay? Being accused of... Um, making her her dancers eat bananas out of people's coochies and you know just a bunch of nonsense but i'm trying to go to the show where you eat the banana out the <laughs> which one is that this is the banana bar well, that's the banana bar yeah you and then you the have the banana, banana in the in yeah, the yeah, coochie yeah. And, and ping pong bowls and you have to go and... yes and that's what to, i want to do then you have to eat it i need my potassium if you know what i'm saying <laughs> my poos potassium <laughs> nasty bitch and the problem is with a lot of these celebs, they don't know where to draw the line, okay? Your photographer is your employee. Your dancers are your employees. They're not supposed to be your friends. You're supposed to have a separate group of friends. You never mix business with pleasure. And I think what happens is that the lines get blurred because people, you know, they make friends with each other. They're relatively around the same age. They're having a good time and they let their guards down. Because it looks like even the next day, she forgot that he was in there. So she was asking like, were you in the car? And he confirmed that he was. And that's when she said, you bet not ever say anything. So I could definitely see this happening. You know what I'm saying? We know she's a big old freak and she's always talking about, you know, freaky deaky stuff. So I can see this happening, you know, her thinking, well, he's cool. It's not a big deal. But at the end of the day, there needs to be a level of professionalism if this is true. Nobody who is cutting your check, your boss should not be doing this. If take the names out of this. If this was a regular, you know, Joe Blow employer and, you know, Joe Blow co-worker, this would be totally unacceptable. I don't want to see my boss have sex in front of me. I don't want to see my boss get head or receive head in front of me. That's not why I'm here for the job. You feel me? So I think the same should be expected. I think it's very interesting how people are quick to just dismiss this. If, you know, again, I don't know if it's true or not, but let's just say if it's true, people are very quick to dismiss this because they're like, oh, it's a man. He should be happy he was there. Or, I wish I was there. Well, maybe you're a freak like that. I don't want to be involved in somebody else's sex life. I don't want somebody to just start having sex in front of me, but maybe I'm different. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out um, to see if, you know, anything comes of this. But I do feel like I am getting teased that he may be feeling away. He might be bitter because he was, you know, fired and now he's running to file a lawsuit. But again, this is why people should act professional at all times and not mix professional business relationships with pleasure. Point blank, period. So I leave the question up to you guys. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. How do you guys feel about this situation? Do you feel like this lawsuit has any merit? Do you feel like he's just clout chasing? And then do you feel like Nicki Minaj has anything to do with this? Because a lot of people are saying that Nicki's behind this. He's a barb. You know, he was liking her post and, you know, commenting on her post. So do you feel like she's somewhere, you know, behind the scenes playing puppet master? Or do you feel like once again, you know, social media is reaching? And then overall, how do you feel about more and more employees coming out and basically blasting these celebrities and saying that they're being put in uncomfortable situations, they're not getting paid their fair money, you know, they're, you know, being sexually harassed, these employers are having, these celebrities are having sex in front of them. You know, let's also not forget with the little Rod situation, this would have never seen the light of day if Diddy had just paid him. If he would have paid him what he was worth, what he promised him initially, because remember, Little Rod was living with Diddy for a year, making music and working on the Love album. So he owed him at least like a hundred thousand. Diddy only wanted to give him thirty grand. Imagine if he would have just been fair and paid him fairly. Diddy wouldn't even be in this crazy situation with Little Rod. And I think that might be the same situation with Meg is this man feels like, you know, he was fired, he wasn't paid his last paycheck or something. So now he's going out and he's filing a lawsuit. So again, like I said, it's gonna be very interesting to see how this plays out. So make sure you guys like the video, feel free to share the video. Most importantly, make sure you leave a comment down below. I can't wait to read y'all's thoughts. So thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.